Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Naomi. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I really love at the heart of this episode, it's an episode about friendship. Obviously, it flows with the titling of the episode. is like Fellowship of the Desk, because obviously playing on like Fellowship of the Ring. And I think it's very poetic, and it's very... Uh, it, it plays very nicely into the plot. Obviously, Jacob being the Lord of the Rings nerd he is. I feel so bad for him because it comes up twice. It's like, I hate Lord of the Rings. He's like, why do people keep saying that? Are, are you just trying to hurt me? I'm like, poor Jacob. I love it. Uh, some other interesting things like in the nerdy realm kind of came up this episode that I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'll, I'll get to that later on. But um, first and foremost... Naomi's dealing with, you know, the aftermath of everything that went down, obviously learning what she learned about Zimbardo, obviously him wanting her to be ready, and I do love that that being an element of this episode is that she's torn between the two different people that wants to train her. Obviously, D wants her to be ready because, right, there are going to be circumstances where you need to be ready to go up against an opponent, especially because you want the fundamentals there because you can't always just rely on brute force from your power. You need the technique because you're going to come across an opponent who is stronger than you. Zimbardo easily outclasses her when it comes to her powers she's only had her powers for a little while whereas Zimbardo's had his for a while so he's trained so he's used to using them so it puts him at an advantage so especially with this Brutus situation on the horizon she has to get ready so D wants to continue training her the way he is and even Naomi's like right I like the way D's trained me because it has prepared me it has helped me in the long run but Zimbardo's like you don't have enough time we don't know when someone's going to come if they're not already here. And yes, using Naomi's power will like make her a magnet, but it's already too late. They know where she is to some extent. We might as well take the risk and go all in on this. So we need to train her to use her powers, but D doesn't want her. Because D's like, if she uses her powers and she hurts someone... Um, you know, especially someone she cares about, she will never forgive herself. And we don't want Naomi in that position because her powers, powers like hers, if there's not emotion, if her emotions aren't in check, it, it could be disastrous, good and bad emotions. But for Zimbardo, it's like we need her to use her emotions to amplify her powers. So, and I like that it ends up in a battle between the two of them later on. They literally duke it out. It's like, right, fists, no wings or nothing. I'm like, even then, I'm like, Zabato probably can hold his own hand to hand. But I'm like, D's probably more well trained in that. Because I'm sure, like, I mean, for what we know, like, the main thing that D had has is his wings. Beyond that, we don't know, like, whether he has any other actual powers other than, like, his wings. Like, him just probably, like, his main power is just probably just being a skilled fighter and warrior, you know? So him and Zubata go at it, but it's like, yeah, D easily wins. But then Zubata starts using his power. He's like, right, we had a moment. We had a code. He was like, yes, we did. But Naomi's enemies, they're not going to have codes. They're not going to have, they're not going to fight fair. You out of anyone knows that better. As someone who's fought battles, who's fought wars, you know better than anyone that like when it comes to the battlefield, there sometimes is no code of honor. And he's like, I get that. And she's like, and he's like, Zubata's like, then why are you training her like you don't? And for him, because it, it's the whole point of, and ultimately they come to the conclusion, we need to work together. It's going to take the best of both of us. D wants to train her to keep her emotions intact because going too fast, too hard will, you know, mess things up. But for D, it's like, right, when he's using that training, I don't know the actual word for that. It's not a dummy, but the, the, the training pole thing, like, if you go to, like, you know, you have to be careful. It's not about how um, hard you hit because you can mess up your rhythm, so... They have to work together on this. They both have to train together. It can't just be D and it just can't be Zimbardo. Both of their elements put together will train her. That's why I was thinking it was going to be the best thing. D training her in the fundamentals and controlling her emotions while Zimbardo pushes her with her powers. Because Brutus is coming and also Naomi is the only hope of saving their world. So... Time is not on their side. And even D's like he was hoping that they would have more time because at the end of the day, she is also a teenager. So he he's going to handle the more emotional, probably uh, fundamental sides of things like fighting without her powers, but also finding that ebb and flow is going to be that, that medium between um, D's way and um, Zimbardo's way and how they coexist, the yin and yang of it all. So that's definitely going to be interesting seeing that implemented going forward. But um, at the crux of this is Naomi finding out she overheard from her parents that they're going to have to move. They're going to have to leave Puerto Suego. 
And obviously Annabelle's taking that heart. And I love that she's like, how dare, how could Greg and Jen do this to me? I mean, I was making them friendship bracelets and everything. She's like, I'm living in a nightmare. And Naomi's like, maybe, uh, maybe they're right. And she's like, oh my God, I really am living in a nightmare. If you're agreeing, like what? Like, do you, you want to leave Port of Swaggum? She's like, no, like it, this is a place that I love and I don't want to leave. But if it means protecting the people I care about, then it might be necessary considering like, all the bad stuff that's happening. I don't want anyone I care about, especially you, getting hurt. But it's like, and I love that at every turn, Annabelle's like, no, 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 not you. We. This is our problem that we're going to solve. And I'm like, D Annabelle, as she says, it, ride or ride. It's not, it's not not ride or die. It's like, no, no, I got you. I got you. You know? And it's like, dude, Annabelle just might be the bestest best friend anyone could ever ask for. I'm like, dude, she's so, that's, dude, I'm, I'm, envious i wish i had a bestie like that holy crap like someone who was like that for you like through thick and thin like i don't know man that this might be like a, a friendship for the ages type of thing i'm like dude annabelle's so dope as a best friend dude that is like bff f f f f f f f f f forever 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 you know uh territory so i i just i don't know because i think it's such a beautiful friendship that i'm like dude i love kingdom hearts and if you know anything about Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts is all about friendship. I I get gushy and, like, sentimental about that shit. Maybe it's also because, like, I've always been a very, like, reclusive person. I've been very, like, I don't really get too close to people and stuff like that. It's a, it's a bad habit I've had ever since I was younger that I've tried to, like, break as I've gotten older. Still struggle with it from time to time. But, like, getting close to people isn't something I'm really good at. So... I think that's why, like, when I see, like, friendships and stuff like that, I'm like, that's so dope. Like, I get giddy about friendships like that. Like, the Nathan and Anthony thing, too. Like, we'll get to that, but that and the whole Lord thing we'll talk about later. But I really love stuff. Like, that's why I'm like, I love that this episode is all about, like, partnership and friendship. I love it. I, I live for that. Like, it might come off cheesy and stuff like that, but, like, my friends are my power. That's always going to be the line I, like, will always carry in my heart from, like, um... Kingdom Hearts, and that's not just a Kingdom Hearts thing, that's like an anime trope, it's, you know, but it's like, right, like, having that squad by your side is always the most important thing, and I think at the end of the day, it's not just going to end up being Jacob, who finds out about Naomi, which gets to that in a second, or Annabelle, and just Annabelle, I think eventually it is going to include Anthony, and Nathan, and Lourdes, I think all three of them are eventually going to find out the truth, and it's like, right, we're in this together, you know, because that's, because from the very beginning, it's like, that's Naomi's squad, you know, and it's like, right, Three, the half the squad is still in the dark, but still. Well, more than half the squad, really, but still. But I do like that Jacob, like, he heard about the um, whole thing that went down in Star Labs because there's, like, an otherworldly weekly or something like that that, like, puts out reports and stuff like that. So he's investigating things because he's, like, really into, like, aliens and stuff like that. And he finds Naomi, like, at Star Labs and he's like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And then, like, she saves him and he's like, oh, my God, you're... You're an alien. This is so cool. Like, how have you known forever that you're an alien? It's like, no, I only found out a couple months ago. Like, the whole Superman thing. It's like, oh, anyone else know? And it was like, what? She didn't tell me? It's like, well, yeah, but I prom made her promise not to tell. And you can't tell her you know either. He's like, yeah, but you need my help, like, tracking down the disc because it turns out the disc got stolen out of her room. Because she still doesn't know who took it, I don't think. Yeah, if I remember correctly, like, she still doesn't know, like, who actually took the disc. Well, that's what I'm confused about, because later on, they, they ended up tracking down the disc, an object rather than a person. So they ended up finding the disc, but I think it was like, I guess like Greg or Jen snuck in really quickly, grabbed it and bounced. And because like, I think they found it at the storage unit, right? Or they were tracking it back there. I don't. That's why I'm a little confused on any episode, whether or not the disc was actually there because like Jen and Greg took it or was like, does someone else still have it? Because she didn't tell her mom and dad about it. She also didn't ever tell, um... D or Zumbato about it. She wanted to handle things on her own and obviously ends up getting Jacob involved and like obviously he's nerding out about like oh my god it's like their code word for it's like so have you always known you were an E.T. fan? Because you know like E.T. is like the greatest alien movie of all time. That's that's probably going to be like a nerdy debate in itself. It's like for some people it's like what? No. Superman's the greatest. Well they, they said movie but some people might be like no Superman's the greatest alien movie of all time. No no no. Alien is the greatest alien movie of all time. You know, I'm sure that's going to be up for debate. Uh, 
but maybe just referencing from like an original project, even if you don't, because you know Superman was adapted into a movie, you know, obviously into TV shows and other mediums. But you get what I'm trying to say. Whereas like ET was like I think I don't think that was based on anything, and neither was Alien based on anything. I don't think. And so like their original projects that were like Alien movies, so maybe that puts them in a little bit of a different category. But regardless. Um, Maybe some people might categorize it as like, no, Alien's like one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Sci-fi, but then you start getting like splitting hairs genre-wise. Regardless, um, I even, I, but I love that first came up about like, oh, what were you guys talking about? Uh, Lord of the Rings, yeah. And then Annabelle's like, you hate Lord of the Rings. And Jacob's like, you do? Like, he was, once again, he was so hurt by that. I love it. Um, but then working together, they ended up finding out uh, Naomi's parents' secret. Jen and Greg have had a go bag ever since they took Naomi in because they always knew this day would potentially come. Everywhere they've ever lived, they had some shape or form of the go bag and they don't want to leave Puerto Suego, but... <clears throat> but at the end of the day, there's no guarantee that... Yeah, it's like they've always done what they could to protect her, but now it's like, we don't know if we can protect you from what's coming because it's like, right, we were able to get the military off your, our backs for a little while, and it's like, they got your disc, and even um, Greg and her and Jen are like, yeah, but there's no guarantee, like, Greg, it's like, I got the feeling like um, Commander Steel, like, might uh, know I'm hiding something, so it's only a matter of time until they come, and we, we as the audience know he does believe he does he is looking into Jen and Greg so it is only a matter of time so they've always prepared for the worst and this hits Naomi because she's had this like whole thing about like right she's been so worried about Annabelle the people she cares about getting hurt now she realizes my entire life you guys have been living in fear you've always been waiting for the other shoe to drop I mean if we do this I'll just be we'll be running for the rest of our lives and you're okay with that and you're like if it means protecting you absolutely and it's like right my family my parents are willing to sacrifice so much for me so it's like how am i that's why she ended up not telling annabelle the truth and annabelle ended up finding out because well jacob has a terrible um poker face that she said she's like yeah he held out longer than i thought he would but um at the end of the day annabelle's like right this is my choice whether or not to... You kind of took that away from me by you not telling me the truth. Because we're OGs in this whole, like, alien, alien stuff. Like, uh, E.T. fans. We are the OG E.T. fans with this whole situation. And it's like, you got me through this, babe. Like, I'm, I'm with you all the way through. But the fact is, for you to not even, like... By hiding it from me, you're taking away my choice. And it should be my choice whether I want to stick around or not. So eventually they do make up at the anniversary party, which I thought was pretty dope. And I, I, I thought it was really sweet. Um, once again, her ride or ride. It's like, yeah, oh, uh, Naomi's like, I thought we were fighting. She's like, yeah, we fight. But, you know, that's what people do, you know. But at the end of the day, it's like, right, it is your choice. And she's like, yeah, you, you got me. I'm, I'm by your side all the way through this. It's like, because she, she doesn't want her best friend to leave. Because even Naomi was like, I've had a lot of friends, but I've never had a best friend until you. I was like, oh. The feels, the feels. I love it so much, dude. But also, they're like all in the know about it now. And I even love that, obviously, uh, Jacob brings it back to, um, he brings it back to Lord of the Rings by being like, right, Frodo thought he had to do it alone, but Sam wouldn't let him because on that journey with Frodo is where Sam wanted to be. And I was like, oh, that's beautiful, man. That's a, that's a beautiful analogy to this whole thing. Uh, my own nerdy reference, because I got to, I got to reference it, Trails of Code Steel, because I can't help myself, I am, it's a, it's a problem, but I love those games so much, and I love that so much about Reen Schwarzer, he has, that is his biggest issue across the entire arc, he has a tendency to always shoulder everything alone, because he wants to protect the people he cares about, he's willing to even push himself to the point of destruction, if it means protecting the people he cares about, he wants to shoulder that burden alone, but time and time again, people have to remind him, it's a complex that he has, that is not quite easy to break of like, right, 
these people want to protect me just as much as I want to protect them. Just like how, because he, he has a hard, it, his situation is different, but it, it, I, I won't go into it because I made videos talk about it all the time. So I won't go into it, but it is the thing of like, right, I got to rely on the people that are there for me who want, because this is where they want to be and I need to let them be there for me. You know, I it doesn't just work as a one-way street of I need to be there to protect them. They want to be by my side through this and no one should have to go through anything alone. And if they want to be there for me, I need to let them because I want, that's where I want them to be by my side as well. I wouldn't want them to be anywhere else. So I, I love that beautiful nature of it. And like I said, it also plays into other elements of the episode where um, we had the whole thing with Anthony and Nathan who kind of have community service after everything. And now it's like, cool, they get signed up at working at the comic book store and I love, I love that whole bit where they're like, they're trying to have that back and forth with Lourdes because she does seem like a little annoyed by them. I was like, I'll come over with friends. And, she, and she's kind of like, really? Because even I was kind of getting that feeling. I'm like, oh, you got, she even says it later on. They're only friends because of Naomi. She's like, if it wasn't for Naomi, we wouldn't really know each other. And it's like, oh, that's harsh. Um, but I was like, there's probably truth to that, you know? But it is also like, yeah, Naomi connected us, but even without Naomi this episode, none of them interact with Naomi this episode, and I think that's what makes it more powerful. Like, yeah, we, we found our way to be friends and help each other out regardless, you know? It's like, yeah, we were brought together by Naomi, but, you know, Naomi is what connects us, but we found our own connection there. But I do love when they're putting away the comics, and she's like, no, you don't put this here, you put this under B. It's like, why? For Batman. Yeah, but if these were about Batman, why don't they just title them Batman? It's like, that not all the comic books are about Batman. It's like, what? They're not? I'm like, oh, man, I'm I'm a noob when it comes to comics. But I'm like, oh, I get it. You're thinking like, because I think it's surprising to be like, wait, certain people have their own, wait. Like, so, wait, there's Harley Quinn comics with no Batman at all? It's that thing you kind of get, you, you have to get used to of like, right, there's comics about characters that have nothing to do with the superhero they might be connected to. Like, they're probably, um... Because there's Harley and, like, just like Harley has her own cartoon, yeah, Batman pops up in it, but he's not the main focus. She is. She gets her own show. I mean, look at Birds of Prey uh, and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Uh, that whole movie, there was references to Batman, but there was no actual Batman in that movie. So it's, it's the same principle, so they're not used to that. I love it. And then, like, to, they find out that Lourdes is actually selling her, um, which I think that's... I'm sure comic book people appreciate that. It's like, right, it's a struggling comic book store. I'm like, I know a lot of, because you've heard a lot of people, a lot of comic book stores ended up having to close because of um, the uh, pandemic. A, a lot of stores just couldn't stay open, you know? So it's like brick and mortar stores, you know? Because obviously you also have like your like online stuff, like your Xfinities, your DC uh, Universe Infinite or um, comiXology, like, stuff like that, like, you can get, like, on stuff, like, online, but, like, brick-and-mortar stores had a hard time during the pandemic, so, because I know Kevin Smith has talked about it a lot, because he also owns his own, like, comic book store, too, so, like, I think that's kind of, like, pretty, so I, I was like, oh, like, I think that's really a neat thing, but also it's, like, it, it's a commentary on that, but also it's, like, right, just Lourdes as a, in general, because she's a big comic book fan, this is her family store, and, like, her dad's struggling, and she wants to help out, so... She's selling her own copies just to keep it afloat. And so Anthony and Nathan want to help her out. Be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll do something. Like, find a way so you don't have to sell. Because these are like vintage. These are old school comics that probably cost a lot. But like, these are obviously very important to you. Because she's a comic book person. And they don't want her to have to lose all of that. But she's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Here, you've done your 40 hours. Just go. But then, like, they have, like, a Lord of the Rings trivia thing where Jacob is doing his thing. And it's like, oh, if you stump it, like, getting people to pay, you know, you know, making – it's their way of kind of making an extra avenue rev uh, um, lane for the comics uh, store. But I, then I love Lord of being like, Lord of the Rings isn't even comic book related. And they're both like, it's not? And I'm like, oh, you idiots. But at the same time, it made me pause. I was like, wait, are you – I was like, wait. There's nothing Lord of the Rings comic book related wise. It's one of those properties where I just assumed there would be. Because Star Wars has literally hit every medium. It is a movie. There are TV shows. There are animated series. There are comics. There are novels. There are video games. It is pretty much touched like the major milestone of... Um, you know, it is literally probably like the biggest example of transmedia storytelling. So... 
that's why I was actually kind of surprised. I, was, I figured like Lord of the Rings would, because Lord of the Rings obviously was originally a book, but has been adapted into a movie. It is now being in the process of being adapted on, as a TV show uh, on Amazon. Uh, there are also video games, whether it's the Shadow of Mordor games, obviously the Lego Lord of the Rings games. Complete, yeah, and there's also, I want to say there were just some straight up turn-based uh, Lord of the Rings games in existence as well, so... All of that. So that's why I was actually surprised. That that was the day I could not let go of. Like, wait, so you're telling me there's literally no comic book related um, Lord of the Rings stuff? I'm like, that's fascinating. I'm like, I'm, well, truth be told, it's like, what about Harry Potter? I mean, that's adapted book that was adapted into a movie, which has been adapted into video games. Um, but also, like, pretend, there's talks about TV show stuff, but I don't think it's ever been. A, I was like, has are there Harry Potter comics? Not that I'm aware of, but it's like, there's certain things where you're like, yeah, there, there's certain, like, franchises that just probably have never, but, like, big franchises like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings to think, like, they've never been adapted to a comic is kind of wild to think about. Because there's so many other properties that have been, like, there's there's Alien and Predator comics, um, so there's, like, so many other franchises that have gone that lane, so it feels so weird to be like, wait, I wonder is that just a token estate thing, or just no one has come... I, I swear, I feel like there was something Lord of the Rings like comic book related, but maybe not. Maybe like the the who over the people the, the token estate have never like licensed that out. Maybe that maybe they don't want it like that. Maybe they, but it's like yeah, I, I feel like if you're open to video games, you'd be a lot more open to like a comic. But like that's why I'm like there has to be something comic book related. I I, I just I refuse to believe that. So that was interesting to me, and I even love later on, Anthony was like, okay, so like. Comic book isn't a genre, which I'm sure some people would debate you on that because, like, the comic book genre had it, it, it because comic books, at least because of the medium of so many things get adapted into movies and TV shows, it has been kind of turned into a genre, even though, yes, it is a medium, you know? That's also like the rub of it, too. Like, that's the thing. Like, I mean, because there's even, you know, once again, anime who've gotten adapted, like, things that were animes first, then getting adapted into uh, manga, which, what are manga? just comic books themselves it's a different stylized comic book but it's still a comic book regardless so i, I that tripped me out but i do love the end result of it like granted like lordis was initially like oh, i don't need your pity we're not friends leave me alone but seeing all that trouble they went through and it's like right she's like i am sorry um she's like i really really hate those movies i really really hate that movie though i'm like that's wild because she's not even talking about the entire trilogy she's just talking about the it sounds like she's just talking about the first movie i'm like i hate it Dude, like, I, I'm not indifferent to Lord of the Rings. I've seen bits and pieces of them, but it's never been, like, my thing. Just like Harry Potter and Star Wars has never really been my thing. If I took time to really get into it, oh, I could get into it. Just like superhero stuff. It's just, I've grown up on so much superhero stuff that it's just, it's always been the medium that I've gravitated to the most, like, uh, superhero-related stuff, so. Tangents and all that aside, but I thought, I, I, I went on a whole tangent, but I love this so much. And like I said, it's like, right, they apologize, because she's like, she's like, right, I'm just not used to this whole thing, and they're like, what? She's like, having friends, I was like, that's heartbreaking, knowing that, like, right, Naomi's probably, like, the first time she ever really, like, connected with anyone, like, probably had a friend, like, once again, I kind of feel that with Lourdes, I'm like, yeah, like, I'm not, I, I, it's not something I'm too used to, like, I, I feel like I have associates, I have, like, there's not too many people, like, I, I'm friendly with people, it's not like, oh, man, like, I'm, ter it's just, I don't, I have a hard time, like, putting myself in a position to, like, to open up the people, just put making myself vulnerable like that. To like just talking to people, it's just I'm just I am socially awkward. That's just how I label it. But I thought that was neat, and it's like and they're like, oh, so we are friends. I'm like, yeah, nice, and it's like cool. So that that was pretty dope. But it's like, yeah, them hitting it off like that. I'm like, yeah, I thought that was beautiful. That 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 was the long. I went like I said on such a large tangent about it, but still. Um, but other than that, we do have the stinger at the end where, uh, there is, um, looking at it, Naomi and, um, Annabelle and, uh, Jacob end up finding out there's someone at that party that's an alien, um, because, like, the readings are now not focused on an object, but a person, though, so it's like, right, is it someone related to Brutus? Is it just someone else in general? Part of me was like, me and my brain, I'm like, you don't think it's Lourdes, do you? Like, you don't think she's an alien? I'm like, I don't think so. But I, that's who immediately came to my mind. But I'm like, who else could be? It, I would assume it has to be someone we don't know. Whoever it is must know Greg and Jen to be at the party because it's their anniversary party. So, 
which I did think it was so cute that they were kind of hiding away. And then was like, wait, are you low key hiding it from your own anniversary board? They were like, what? No, we just, you know, catching a breather. I thought that was so cute. But uh, I'm very excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of these devel Ooh, developments. Sorry. Uh, uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.